say what a pleasure it's been for me to meet Bronwyn for the first time. And um, this selection is quite remarkable. There are some really superb things here. Um, and I was saying to uh, Michael there, I think they're very well priced actually, so you can all you can all get two, so far as the <laughs> um, but, And I would also like to acknowledge um, uh, Michael and Nerida and Ruth for the great work they do um, here at the Lorraine Diggins Gallery. Now, there's been an enormous rise of interest, of course, in women painters um, in, in recent decades, and Michael's mentioned that series um, at the National Gallery of Australia, which was really conceived after my time as director, but not long after. Um, called Know My Name. And it's really just to say there are a lot of women artists who have been underestimated, overlooked, you know, they've passed under the radar um, for a whole range of reasons. Uh, it's a very interesting subject, actually. Um, but when I think about it through my career, it, it started in the 1970s. Um, that was the moment when a whole group of mainly women feminist um, art historians began to revive the careers and knowledge about um, a whole range of um, women artists. And, um, and that was particularly the case at Melbourne University where I was um, through the 70s. And then one of my friends and colleagues from that time, Janine Burke, uh, many of you will remember this, published in 1980 um, an important book called Australian Women Painters. And that sort of was the, from the moment from which everyone started saying there's another whole parallel history um, of Australian art that we've rather <coughs> forgotten about or haven't given enough credit to uh, because, um, and I'm, I'm not commenting on, on, on the Lorraine Diggins Gallery, um, but you know, the Australian art world and particularly the dealers, it was a boys club um, for a very long time. I have to say that because um, everything I know about the, the period suggests it to me. And of course, one of the early um, people who lifted the reputation of such artists was Jim Alexander um, with his gallery not too far from here, um, important women artists who, who only passed away um, fairly, fairly recently. So this um, show, I would say, is uh, an, another very significant sort of contribution to this ongoing process of recovering. And, and, and was, well, uh, what I'm going to say in the next few minutes is that <coughs> Hilda Riggs Nicholas does not need recovering. Um, uh, not at all. She was obviously, as Michael has said, right from the start, she was seen as a gifted artist who was going places. There's no question about that. But after her death, there was a period when she was, became another of those very interesting women painters about whom we didn't know all that much. I think it, that's, that's perhaps the way to put it. And that's how it was when I was a student. But I began to see her works and I always liked them. Um, and I felt that those wonderful, sunny, early 20th century, pre-World War I paintings, and there are so many of them here, because although she was based in Paris, um, she went to Paris in 1907 uh, with her mother, um, Elizabeth, and her sister. Um, they went off to Morocco, and they spent time in Tangier, and there are some quite fabulous um, um, representations of, of those Moroccan visits in this exhibition. Some are for sale, and some are not there lent, either by private collectors or institutions. But what I've been amazed by um, are, is the group of drawings of the North African period, which are for sale. And, and these are wonderful. I mean, these are all museum quality works. So um, I, I actually thought, Michael, your prices were rather reasonable, I have to say. Um, so, um, but um, look, it's, it's, I think it's a wonderful opportunity in any case for um, everyone to come and see this exhibition, and for those of you who are inclined to make acquisitions, because this is a very significant group, and I suspect from my earlier discussion with Bronwyn that, that there aren't going to be too many groups like this that would ever become available again. Um, so, uh, we had an exhibition at Melbourne University in their gallery in 1999, um, uh, and then when I look at what was going on, there was another big increase in interest in Hilda Riggs Nicholas around 2010, a whole series of exhibitions and um, things were happening um, around her. And of course, in the year 2000, um, we have John Piggott's book that's been mentioned, and um, a very important uh, contribution to our understanding um, of um, uh, Hilda Riggs Nicholas. And then, of course, the more recent um, monograph by Richard Travers, which came out in, uh, 2000 and, in 2021, I should say. Um, so I think that my, my feeling is that all of this has added up to uh, an understanding of the work of um, um, Hilda Riggs Nicholas that perhaps we didn't have before, um, and now it's out there. And I think that everyone is reassessing 
rethinking and agreeing that she was absolutely one of the great, great female artists um, of the 20th century, um, so far as um, Australia is concerned. Uh, there was an exhibition at Mossman Gallery in 2014. I didn't see it, but I gather it was a very good one. Um, but there was one critic who happened to be a pal of mine, so I'm not going to mention his name, um, who said in his review, he loved the work, but the question on his mind is what I've just seen, does that put her in the category of one of the greatest artists um, of our time? And he said, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just waiting a bit, and I'll, I'll keep studying and thinking about it. Um, but I would suggest to you that what has happened since 2014 and the enormous growth of interest in the art of Hilda Ritz Nicholas um, is, is something that needs to be uh, thought about. There's, of course, a new focus on her as a war artist. And that makes sense uh, because we had a five-year rolling commemoration, of course, of the First World War from 2014 to 2018. Um, and there was a lot happening, and when I was at the NGA, who's director, we did three exhibitions around the visual culture of the First World War, and of course Hilda Ricks Nicholas was very much uh, a part of that. We also did a very interesting show on the um, war paintings, the First World War paintings of Arthur Streeton, because he was a, um, an official war artist. Interestingly, unlike in Canada, um, Arthur, um, the Australians did not appoint any female war artists. Um, they did in the Second World War, but not, not in the First World War. Well, um, so there's a new, a new attention, as I've suggested, um, to the work of Hilda, and um, particularly those exhibitions that occurred in those years, um, 2014 to 2018, um, her paintings and drawings of the diggers, the Australian diggers, really got attention. Um, and she came back to Australia. Um, she was in England, um, where she married, of course, um, uh, Major George Nicholas, but as, as Michael has said, um, it was in five weeks after their wedding, he was killed in action um, on the Western Front, which was a, 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 an appalling sort of disaster for her personally. Um, so, well, um, my, my feeling is that that grief that she felt is one of the reasons why we've been thinking about her anew. Um, and, the, the, and looking again at the works that she produced in England um, during the First World War, and then some, of course, after 1918 when she returned to um, Australia. And the Great War Images is a kind of triptych pro humanitates, or pro, pro humanitate, I should say, a triptych with that wonderful, you may have seen uh, reproductions of it, the central figure is um, a, a soldier who was probably, um, he, he is being blown backwards. It's, he's seen it effectively from behind with his arms outstretched. So there's obviously um, uh, a kind of visual reference to the crucifixion. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's a very powerful image. Sadly, that and some other works of that period were destroyed by fire um, in 1930. So we don't, uh, we don't have them anymore. But the, that, that great sense of grief, of desolation, um, and of loss, which absolutely marks her art um, from that period. And uh, Paul Paffin, uh, a very good, fine art historian here in Melbourne, had, had published a book in 2020 called For the Fallen. Now the reason for doing the book was the um, State Library of Victoria competition to have a mural painting that commemorated the fallen in the war. Um, and with, obviously for things like the Shrine of Remembrance, a vast building, um, that took another 10 years. It didn't open until 1934. So this was the very first public commemoration uh, for the fallen. And when you read his book, it is absolutely full of references to Hilda Riggs Nicholas. From page one, page five, page 10, 15 pages in the middle of the book, and, and on it goes. And I think it shows that there's been this enormous shift since I was a student at university in realizing that uh, Hilda Riggs Nicholas is right up there. And uh, the competition, an enormous number of artists uh, put in to win it because um, it came with a very big prize and in that period after the First World War um, money was very important to artists. But Hilda came in third. She was, there was a final shortlist and she was number three. But she was up against all of the contemporary artists of any note um, in Australia at the time. And that also, I think, tells us quite a lot about her reputation. Um, well, um, I, I think that, um, I'll never forget, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this, there are different um, periods of her work. 
She came back to her, she went back to Paris in 24 and stayed for a couple of years, and there she painted one of the greatest masterpieces, I think, of the National Gallery of Australia. Um, it's called Les Fleurs des Daniers, um, and it's a, it's a painting of a woman in um, a beautiful neo 18th century dress who has thrown a bunch of flowers onto the ground. So it's an angry woman, it's a woman who is making her own decisions. It's incredibly beautiful. It's unique in her oeuvre. And I do wonder uh, whether, if she had decided that this was a direction to go, I would put it to you that her reputation today would not just be an Australian reputation, notwithstanding the fact that you know, she exhibited for the Royal Academy at the New Salon, and the French state bought a couple of her works um, from her exhibitions in Paris, um, I think she'd have a European and, and global reputation. Uh, it is so good. And um, just Google it um, when, when, you, when you get home. It's, it's an amazing thing. And when we put it out, when I was um, up in Canberra, um, the, the curator said, we've, we've had some of these war drawings, but let's get out this wonderful, wonderful painting, an, an enigmatic painting um, by her. The public went mad. It was astonishing. From day one, when this picture went up in the galleries, there were crowds of people around it. Everyone was taking a selfie with it in the background. Um, everyone was talking about it. And our comms people were able to track it um, on, on the internet. And it went global. It, it was all over the world. And the number of hits from that point on, um, on the NGA website, looking at Hilda Ricks Nicholas, was truly astounding. Um, and I think that says it all. I mean, that, that if, if we're talking about the shifts in taste and the periods whereby, um, you know, when she was held in high esteem and known, and those when she was a bit out of, out of fashion, but she's back with a vengeance. My final comment today is just this. Um, I thought her late works are all about um, being the wife of a pastoralist, working in Australia, working, um, you know, on, 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 on a farm. They're, they're beautiful, wonderful pictures flooded with light, and she sent some exhibitions to France and to England showing these. But one of the things that I've had on my mind as a director is to curate an exhibition with that, with the imagery of Australia and how Australia wanted to present itself in that period between uh, the World Wars, uh, through the 1920s and especially into the 1930s. And uh, Hilda Ricks's, Ricks Nicholas's paintings are quite sensational um, from this period. Um, they show, you know, Stockman and her own husband, um, um, she remarried, of course, in, 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 in uh, 1928 uh, with their son Ricks, uh, Bronwyn's uh, father, um, whose portrait is here. And, um, uh, and I think there'd be a brilliant exhibition to make with Hilda Ricks Nichols at the center, as the centerpiece of the show. But looking at other artists, we've had a bit of it with that late street and show that was on a few years ago. You know, um, the land of the golden fleece, that idea of flocks of sheep and the, the wealth of Australia, the climate and the enjoyment of it. And also works like Daryl Lindsay's The Stockman, the, the pastoralist's daughter, for example, the squatter's daughter. Um, that'd be a great show. So look, um, and enjoy this exhibition. It really is significant. There, I have to be honest, and I'm going to say it a second time now, there are real opportunities here, because it won't come along again. I mean, th th there are wonderful works on paper, especially, um, that are very well priced, I have to say, as a direct <laughs> form of dealing. I was always dealing with uh, curators saying, we have to buy this, we have to buy that. Um, so I've got a fairly well honed idea of what things are. And um, I think the prices, the prices are good, that's all I'm saying. Um, and so, on that final, very optimistic note, um, I would like um, to declare the exhibition open. <laughs>